Oi, Battle. My radiator exploded. Let's hit up the shop and put in a new radiator. What an exciting day yesterday. I'm glad that I didn't go to pick up my daughter from school in the 71 because I probably wouldn't have made it down to the end of the block. Got that guy on there. Okay, Battle. We got the uh, fender covers on. The good thing about working on the 71 is I don't have to deal with metric size fittings. Got the four half inch bolts off that hold the top of the radiator shroud in place. Take this guy off. It's the top of the fan shroud. These hose clamps, you want to get good quality hose clamps, of course. In the 70s, they used the tower style, but don't buy hose clamps from Horrible Freight. They don't work well at all. And then I did these brackets for the electric fan. Whenever you install an electric fan, I suggest you hit up the salvage yard. This one is off of a mid-90s Ford Taurus with a 3.8 liter V6. The stock electric fans are going to move more air than any other electric fan that you get unless it's a really high dollar one from one of the performance catalogs. And then make sure you never use those zip ties that go through the core of the radiator. You don't want to damage the core of the radiator. That's why I made these brackets here and they just hook over the top of the radiator and then I have it zip tied to those brackets. So really, it should be pretty easy to remove. Let's hope that these brackets fit the OE style radiator. Had to take off my hobo jacket. It's above freezing. But it's still crisp. The 3.8 liter V6 Ford Taurus, the Ford Windstar van, and the early 2000s 2.5 liter engine in a contour. Those are all good fans to get from the salvage yard because they're flat. They go into a hot rod easily. And then you can wire them up with a kit that you can get at one of the parts warehouses. There we go. There's one more zip tie on the bottom here, but the bracket came loose. It looks like it's going to come out now because the passenger side tank and transmission cooler was the one that blew off. So I'll go ahead and remove it and then we'll do a comparo to the OE style one that I have. There are the radiators battle. The parts store cheapy on the left. It's an aluminum core with plastic tanks. And then the OE style one on the right that was in the car when I bought it. I don't know if it was originally on the car in 1970 or if it was just a replacement that the previous owner got. As I recall, it doesn't leak. I had just done one of those might as well improvements and got in the parts store cheapy. In the past I had mentioned that I'm a big advocate of using local parts stores and I like it that they have a lifetime warranty but after this experience I have a parts store cheapy radiator in my 86 F250 bullnose truck. I think that one's going to come out eventually too. I think it's best to stick to the performance parts houses online or through the mail order or else get new old stock parts or use local craftsmen to rebuild old parts. And of course in the modern age you can use the internet and get the contacts of craftsmen throughout the nation that know how to rebuild radiators, brake boosters, power steering gearboxes, 
all that type of equipment. So, let's go ahead and get the passenger side radiator tank out from the 71 because it blew off that parts store cheapy radiator. And then we can install the OE style radiator and we'd be good to go. This is the passenger side radiator tank. I was actually pretty impressed. I had mentioned that I haven't started the car in a while and it did start right up. I got a battery tender. It was a little bit cold nature. Ideally I need to drive to the gas station and get fresh gas in it since it's been sitting for a number of months and then I have to adjust the brakes because the brake lights are always on but that's easy stuff to do there might be a few nice days left this year here in Oklahoma maybe drive this to the uh, coffee and cars coming up we'll see and this stuff is sort of slimy because it has antifreeze all over it. I washed the exterior of the car, but I neglected the engine. <coughs> it's a dirty anyways. There it is. Cheap imported junk. Well, except for these two inverted flare hose barbs that I got for the transmission cooler. You can see the nastiness on the inside I did flush the radiator in block because I had had the engine sitting in my garage for over 10 years and there for a while I was thinking oh well I'll sell the 71 so I pulled the rebuild engine out of it and it's sitting in my shop and I put the original engine back in it but it had been in it for at least two years with the parts store cheapy radiator and I was driving it back and forth to the cars and coffee it was doing fine and finally this side tank just decided to let loose so buyer beware when you get cheapy imported parts battle alright let's take a look at the radiators again I don't know if you can see it battle but right there, the aluminum core is sort of bent out. I bet that's where the failure began. And then here's the transmission cooler that you saw when I removed it from the car. And then this is another piece of the side tank. I'm going to keep that one for my box of treasures. One time I'll have to uh, share that with you all. And there's another piece of the side tank floating around someplace here in the yard. Once I get the OE style radiator in, I'll move the 71 back into the garage after I fill it. And then I'll look for that remaining piece of the side tank. And then it's uh, off to the parts store to at least get warranty on the parts store cheapy radiator. Maybe I'll use it in the future when I build an engine run stand and I can put the spare 455 I have on it and then sell it I'd always thought my 71 would be a good candidate for an engine swap either LS engine swap or even better yet a Triton V8 engine swap you don't see that done very often overhead cam has got to be better than a pushrod V8 you don't see guys swapping flathead engines into their hot rods anymore that was a thing of the past all right let's go ahead and get that OE style radiator in I happened upon this fitting in one of my bins and it fits it's inverted flare to 6a in I don't know if I had AN style ends 
on the transmission cooler hoses in the past. Here's another 5 8 inverted flare to 6 a in. So I can put those in there and get her back on the road. Okay, battle. Here are my 6 a in fittings. A in Army Navy. Here are my hose shears. And there are my transmission cooler lines. Screw around, do it right. It's gotta be a sharp set of shears. You can't have all the fray ends. Gotta get good name brand parts. Not the chief overseas junk. I've never been happy with the way AN fittings go together. Here's the old radiator that I'm going to put back in. I don't think it leaks. Here's the warranty radiator. Look at that. They end up using the hose clamp and a rubber nipple to cover up the coolant port. It's uh, getting to be pretty low quality these days. I'll probably include some video of these 6AN fittings that I was trying to get to work. Uh, these are imitation brand from the International Shopping website, so they don't work well at all. I suggest that you get at least the Performance Parts warehouse brand, if not name brand, because I couldn't get them to work. Uh, they're trash. I should probably throw them away. I was lucky enough to find a 5 8 inch inverted flare that fits right here that goes to a 3 8 inch hose barb. Make sure that you never use Teflon tape on an inverted flare fitting because it seals on this flare right here. Oh shoot. Alright, this uh, hose clamp's done battle. Alright, I got a worm style one. The old school one. It'll do fine. I'm going to have to revisit this in the future when I have this ready to record or else if I buy a performance radiator. Upper radiator hose? Well, let's wait until I get the fan. Alright. I get that fan on. And I get a new high speed radiator or get this one record, I will redo these brackets. Get the two on the top figured out, and then I can do the ones at the bottom. These ones that I got are heavy duty. There we go. Got the bottom one through on the driver's side. One more battle. This one's out of the way. I have to get in my back. Or do it by feel. Got that one tight battle. So we don't want the hanging chads. Make sure you use a pair of side cutters and cut off the excess, or else the guy with the red beard might find out. Nice. All right. I'll get that uh, front cover on here once I cut off the excess on the bottom. This number one protector. I probably need to invest in some, some new ones. These ones are well worn. Get the bottom on the driver's side excess, top on the driver's side excess, That's three, and then top on the passenger side excess. There's four of them. Those hood springs come in handy for shop towel holders. Let's get this uh, upper radiator hose tight. And then can get the top on there and then I can zip tie this out of the way for an extra 10 or 12 horsepower. The belt tank that I got at the salvage yard on there. All right, battle. Get the 
top of the radiator shroud on here. There we go. Got our four bolts and snug them down. All right. We got a radiator in there, Battle. And I checked the petcock at the bottom. It was tight when I put the radiator in. But we'll fill it with water and uh, get the old started and at least get her back in the garage. And then I need to figure out if I want to get this one record or if I'm going to get a performance one. So I'll have to revisit this in the future. Let's zip tie that connector out of the way. Keep it out of the way of the belt. And keep this from falling. Yep. Let's dress it the same way. Don't want the guy with the red beard to find out. She's in! Thanks for hanging with me, Battle. I'm going to go ahead and get some uh, coolant in it or some water and then get her started and I'll let you see me pulling it back in the garage. This stupid phone piece of junk. I thought it was filming, but it wasn't. I'll go ahead and top it off. I added a gallon of coolant. Here's a gallon of water. Get the battery back on battle. Negative first. Now, the 71 started with a little bit of hesitation yesterday. And I uh, charged the battery overnight, put it on the tender. So, all right, battle. Let's try to get her started. No battle, my brake lights aren't stuck on. I'm gonna go ahead and test them. Yep. Look, there they are on again, battle. So I know that the circuit works, I just need to adjust the sensor. I was afraid that my emergency brake was stuck, engaged, but it pulled out just fine from the garage yesterday. Let's go ahead and check that. Uh, coolant level. Go ahead and add some. Got some nastiness burning off of the engine battle. Of course I need to paint the valve covers and do shit really good with engine degreaser. Battle, I'm going to go ahead and get it in the garage. I do not like the way that it's steaming. gaskets it's pretty stinky I need to lift the garage door behind the truck smoking from this side too seems to idle fine I don't know I guess 
I got a little bit accomplished. I got it into the shop. That's what I wanted to do. There's no lifter tick. There's no rod knock. I'm going to shut her off, battle. My upper radiator hose isn't hard. I don't know. Well, it's in the garage. That's its favorite thing to do. Besides get a ride on the back of a tow truck. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think all this uh, steam or smoke is from. And this radiator isn't leaking at all that I can tell. It smells like an engine battle. I don't think it's steam. I don't think it's like a blown head gasket that's steaming. I just think it would be nastiness that's on the engine or bad valve cover gaskets that's causing it to smoke so much. All right, battle. See you on the flip side. Well, there's definitely a compression test in my future. Please consider liking and subscribing with that notification bell on. And I'll see you next time, battle. Screwdriver to loosen the upper radiator hose. Don't have to worry about the lower radiator hose on the opposite side because that is the tank that blew off. Nice old 64. Well, it went all the way to the ground.